We're famous artists. Yes, famous artists. Paul Gauguin. Edward Hopper. And then go. Oh! Pablo Picasso. I thought so. I'm Goya. Hawaii. We're definitely people you should know. Sandra Botticelli, Michelangelo, Paul Clay. The names just keep on coming and we haven't got all day. We're famous artists. Renoir. We're famous artists. Au revoir. Monet. Da Vinci, Peter Bruegel. Don't pitch me. Some people think we're geniuses. Some people think we're weird. Weird? What do you mean? Weird is a relative term. To lose the track. And please don't touch my beard. Andy Warhol, Jacob Lawrence, Jackson Pollock, too. I'm afraid we have to go now. So we'll just say doodaloo. And if you think we're slightly nuts, that may be slightly true. The bad my fine young viewer will leave up to. Nipper, be quiet. We don't want to wake our model. Nipper, Nipper. Oh, hello there. My name is Mary Cassatt. I'm known as a great American painter, even though I lived most of my life and made most of my paintings in France. So perhaps I should really say bonjour. I loved families and children. My paintings, pastels, and prints of mothers with their babies are among my most famous works. I showed children in their families, not in stiff, dressed-up poses, which was the usual style of the day, but the way they looked in real life. Here I am in a portrait I painted of myself. I was born in 1844 in Allegheny City, Pennsylvania. When I was seven years old, my family and I left the United States of America. We moved to Paris, France to live for a couple of years. My parents wanted their children to see all the wonderful sights of Paris. They took us children to the great art museums and galleries where I saw my first works of art. We loved going from museum to museum. At least my mother and I did. Come along, Mary. We have seven or eight more museums to see today. Just a minute, Mother. Wow, look at this one. I'm tired. I'm bored. I'm hungry. I am out of here. Wow, being an artist is for me. A few years after my family returned to America, I decided that I wanted to be an artist. Not just any artist, but a serious artist. Someone who made their living by painting important pictures. At first, my father was very upset. He didn't want me to be a serious artist because in the 1850s, people felt women weren't supposed to be artists. They felt women should only have very polite hobbies, become someone's wife, and stay at home to raise their children. It was one of the few times Father and I didn't get along. Dear, Mary's been holding her breath for three days now. Why don't you tell her it's okay to be an artist? But, but, oh, I, oh, all right. <sighs> oh, thank you, Papa. Finally. When he realized how much I wanted to be an artist, my father agreed to send me to art school. So, when I was 15, I entered the Pennsylvania Academy of Fine Arts. I spent four years there, studying very hard. My teachers felt the best way for students to learn was to copy the work of other artists, to see how it was made. But in Pennsylvania, all we had to copy were dusty old plaster replicas of Greek and Roman statues. 
Hey, uh, can you give me a hand here? I have got to get out of here. I wanted more. I wanted to study the very best art in the world. And that was in France. So, in 1866, I returned to Paris, where I spent as much time as I could in art museums, copying famous paintings. If they'd let me, I would have stayed all night. <laughs> Mademoiselle, you are welcome to stay here during museum hours only. Oh. I was working very hard, and soon I was becoming quite a good artist myself. <laughs> My early paintings, like this one, on the balcony, told a story like a play on the stage, with dark backgrounds, and lots of details, painted very carefully. This is what people expected a good painting to look like. It's what the judges of the big Paris art show called the Salon liked to see, too. That's why they picked this painting for the show. The Salon was an important place to have your paintings shown. People came from all over the world to look at, and maybe to buy, the pictures they saw there. It wasn't easy getting a painting into the Paris Salon, especially if you were a woman artist. And especially, especially, if you were an American woman artist. After a while, though, I started to feel my paintings looked too much like everything else in the salon. Then something happened that changed my art and my life. I saw Impressionist art in a gallery window, huh? and I couldn't believe my eyes. I wonder who painted these? They're great! The Impressionists were a group of artists whose work was very different from the salon style. Impressionists liked to paint outside, like Edgar Degas did in this painting of racehorses. Or close to their subjects, like Pierre Renoir did in this picture of a little girl watering flowers. And they liked to work quickly, so they could catch the way things looked just at the moment they saw them. Like this street scene painted by Camille Pissarro. I love the Impressionists' bright, beautiful colors and the everyday subjects they chose, like Claude Monet's Garden in the Country. But of all the Impressionists, Edgar Degas was my favorite. I thought his colors, unusual angles, and the way he painted people made his paintings perfect. Edgar Degas had seen my paintings. He liked them, and he asked me to join the Impressionist group. I was thrilled. We want you to join us. So far, nobody likes us or our paintings. And we don't make any money. But we get to paint anything we want. <laughs> and we have fun, too. Oh, count me in. Soon, I was painting in a whole new style. I stopped using dark background colors and painting people in fancy costumes. My colors got brighter. My brush strokes got looser. And I started to show the people I saw every day doing everyday things. Look closely and you'll see how I used little flecks of color to make eyes and noses, and to capture the delicate expressions on people's faces. Now, people were finally beginning to appreciate the beauty of Impressionist art. And I was becoming quite well known for my new style of painting. I stopped painting pictures that the judges at the salon would have accepted. I was much more interested in the opinions of the other Impressionists, especially Edgar Degas. Blue! It needs more blue! I learned all I could from dear Edgar. 
even though he wasn't always easy to get along with. Aren't you listening? Am I talking to the wallpaper? Like this. Oh, Edgar, weren't you clever? Edgar and I became very good friends. He even made this picture of me, leaning on my umbrella in one of the great Paris museums. You can't see my face, but that is me. We spent a lot of time looking at and talking about art. At one art show, we discovered Japanese prints. Their flat shapes, strong lines, bold blocks of color, and interesting patterns seemed new and exciting. I really liked Japanese art. It gave me lots of good ideas. Soon, I was doing everything Japanese. So, I decided to make a series of my own color prints, using Japanese ideas showing things a lady might do in the course of her day. You can see how I use Japanese ideas like strong colors, simple shapes and patterns in these prints. Edgar and I also experimented with pastels. We wanted to find a way to make their chalky colors as bright as possible and make them sink deep into the paper. We mix pastels with oil, turpentine, even steam. Try this, Edgar. Nonsense, woman. That will not work. Oh, but Edgar... Stand back! Eventually, my mother, father, and sister Lydia came to live with me in Paris. My brothers and their families visited me, too. It's a wonder I ever got anything done. I used the members of my family as models in many of my paintings and pastels. This is my brother Alexander and his little boy. They were alike in so many ways. The way I painted them almost makes them look like one person. <laughs> Here is a picture of my mother reading to her grandchildren. I was interested in photography and framed this painting so the pony and carriage were cut off. I knew that framing my painting like a snapshot would give more importance to my sister and the little girl sitting next to her. My reputation as a really good artist, especially as a painter of mothers and children, kept growing and growing. I thought that the everyday lives of children and their families were interesting and important, and I drew them in a new, natural way. I showed children sleepy, wide awake, bored, and happy. In 1892, something happened that showed just how famous I had become. Special delivery from America for Miss Mary Cassatt. I received a very special invitation from the United States of America. There was going to be a World's Fair in Chicago. Hooray! for the women's building at the World's Fair, I was asked to make a really big painting, a mural, for one of the walls inside. My huge mural showed women busy doing things for themselves and their children. It was called Modern Woman. Huh. Modern women, first they want to paint. What would they want next? The right to vote. <laughs> That's right, Edgar. Now you're catching on. The painting was so big that it had to be lowered into a ditch so I could reach the top to paint it. These American painters are really strange. We, oui. Renoir never asked us to do this kind of stuff. Black and white pictures are all that's left of my World's Fair mural. Because after the fair was over, my big painting mysteriously disappeared. <laughs> to see what it looked like in color, all I can show you are similar pictures like this one. I've always wondered what happened to that mural. <laughs> Who knows? 
Well, Clem, that'll fix that leak. Yep, <laughs> and right for it too. Now I was a world famous artist, and people were always asking my opinion about art. I convinced many of my friends to buy great art to take back to America. We'll take three degas. Oh, very good. Well, how about six Monets? Popular favorite. But I'd really like to. No, 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 no. The three Cezannes. An excellent choice. You know, I really think that. A Pizarro. Magnifique. I just. And make that to go. Yes, of course. Fine. Oh, and throw in a Renoir for dessert. <sighs> My advice helped fill American museums with many of the most beautiful and important paintings in the world. And some of them, I'm proud to say, are pictures that I painted myself. <laughs> Maybe you'll have a chance to go to a museum and see my paintings in person. Today, I'm best known as a painter of mothers and children. Although I never married or had children of my own, I seem to understand the love between mothers and their babies better than any other artist. I wanted my pictures to make you feel as though you were right there. Looking in on someone during a special moment. Riding a bus. Or a boat. Reading a map or learning to play music. I made ordinary everyday scenes important. Whether I use soft sparkling pastels or strong bold shapes, my pictures were always warm and friendly. I lived to be 83 years old. By the time I died, I helped make people understand that the lives of women and children could be the subjects of important art. And I helped make the world realize that women could be great artists too. Well, I've enjoyed our time together, but I'm afraid I have to get back to my painting now. It's hard work, you know, making great art. It's been a pleasure getting to know you. Goodbye.